Well, and howdy. please introduce your please introduce your sidekick. Okay, this, my name is Mrs. Boismer. Most of the kids call me Mrs. B because Boismer is a really hard name, so they just call me Mrs. B. And I've mm -hmm. asked my friend Renee Cooper, wave Renee, yeah, to join me. She's one of the master guides here in Texas, and we do a lot of stuff together. Um, as uh, Mr. O'Phil told you, we've had cold weather here. Every about 50 years, we get really cold weather and it freaks us all out. So uh, we're all uh, getting warm. Today is quite beautiful, the sunny day today, and it's probably about 40, so we think it's still pretty cold. That's that'd be about there. five degrees Celsius, give yeah, or take that'd be a little about bit. Five degrees, so we think that's pretty cold. But uh, by middle of next week, we'll be in the 70s, so we'll be back to normal. <laughs> But we're going to do postcards and some of you may have postcards and some of you may have never seen postcards so i thought it would be fun to do this i love postcards mm -hmm. i love collecting postcards because they remind me of places i've been or people i love who have sent me postcards like i got this postcard where are you getting the camera in the mail and i said what perfect camels who has camels? And when I looked at the back, it was from my niece, Julie. And she says, greetings from outer, outer Mongolia. Lovely place and people. And I thought, oh, Julie went to Mongolia. How cool is that? And I couldn't wait to talk to her when she got back to see why she was in, Magno in uh, Mongolia. And she didn't have to spend a lot of money and she didn't have to spend a lot of time writing me a note. It's just about three sentences but it's really cool. And my favorite postcard and kind of why I started collecting postcards is one I got when I was about 18. When I was at 18, I was away at school in Washington State at Rosario Beach and I could call home once a week. We didn't have cell phones, we didn't have computers. And so once a week I'd go to the pay phone and I'd call my parents and we'd chat and hear and make sure I was okay and so on. Well, during the week, I would get mail from my friends and stuff, and I'd write letters. And one day, I got a postcard, and it said Mexico on it. And I thought, huh. And I turn over, and it says on the back, all it said was, love, dad. <gasps> Why is dad in Mexico? My parents lived in Illinois, which is in the north part of the United States. Why was he in Mexico? He didn't say. He just said, love, dad. And I had to wait all the rest of the week. So I could call home and say, dad, why were you in Mexico? And he'd gone on a mission trip to Mexico and it was really fun. But to me, that's what started me collecting postcards because that was really special to me to get something, it's like a surprise message. So there's lots of reasons people collect postcards and there's a lot of history to postcards and they kind of catch your attention because they usually have really pretty pictures or something funny or something interesting. So I'm gonna share my screen and I'm going to pull up my presentation. There we go. And uh, we're going to do the first question. Okay, before official postcards, there was a postcard. See, postcards had to be officially done by law. They go to the Senate or uh, Parliament or someplace to make postcards. And back in the 1800s, there was no postcards. But before there were official postcards, some guy invented it. And they, nobody knew this until recently, like maybe two decades ago. They found a card and that card had a stamp on it. So they know it was from 1840. And he drawn a cartoon on it. And let's see if I can show you this. That's the cartoon. He was making fun of postal workers. Those are a bunch of postal workers with ink pens in a big thing. There's no message on it. And he sent it to himself. He was making a joke on his postman. He knew the postman would see the picture and recognize it as a joke. And I thought that was so funny that the first card that they ever found was a joke and it was artwork and it wasn't even official. Isn't that fun? And it sold for an awful lot of money because it has one of the very first stamps that has ever issued. And if you see there in pounds, it was 31,000 pounds it sold for. Isn't that amazing? 
I yeah. presume that that's what it sold for when collectors bought it recently, right? That's not how much yes. he paid to send it. No, no, he drew it himself. Okay. He drew it himself on his own piece of card stock. He cut it out and he went to the post office, got a stamp, and he mailed it as a joke to his postman. Okay, so cool? years and years later, when they found it and sold it to collectors, collectors mm -hmm. were like, oh, this is really cool, got to have it. And so yeah. they somebody paid 31,000 pounds yeah. for it. That, that's wow. pretty amazing. In dollars, that's like forty thousand dollars or so. Right. But now here's we part of your questions is know the brief history of postcards in your country. That's the question you have to answer. Mm -hmm. I don't know where everybody is who's joining us on Facebook or joining us on um, Zoom. So we're going to cover three countries. We're going to cover the United States, the UK, and France. Hoping we cover quite a few of the people in your listening and viewing area, but there you, go. you can find the rest of the countries online in Google and uh, Wikipedia. There'll be ones for the different countries uh, that you can get. First, I was going to go over like the general, like who was first. Well, on October 1st of 1869, like my postcard says, they came up with the postcard. They and they proposed it. And the people said, nah, nobody's going to write, write postcards. Who's going to want to put a personal message for everybody to read? So they turned it down. So, but the man who thought it was a good idea, and I can't say his name because he's German. And let me get his name here. He's... Let's see, what is his name here? Emmanuel Hermann, I guess is his name. Anyway. He didn't quit. He thought it was still a good idea. So he proposed it again. And finally in Germany, they said, okay, and this is the first postcard. It was the all one side was um, where the address went. It says in German that it's an official postcard. It has a stamp and it's address. And then whatever you wanted to write went on the other side. Okay. And so they did that first. And then Switzerland, Luxembourg, United Kingdom, Germany, they jumped on board. But the United States, they tried in the United States. They said, no, 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 no. This is a stupid idea. Nobody's going to like this. Nobody's going to want to send a postcard. So they said no. And then Belgium, Holland, Denmark, Finland, Sweden, Norway, Canada. You see my list there. All those countries joined in. The United States didn't join until almost three years later. But little by little, different countries got together and said, yeah. And then they agreed amongst themselves so that you could send a postcard from the UK to Germany for the same amount of money as sending one from Germany to the UK. So they had kind of an agreement on how that worked between the different countries. So in the UK, they started doing postcards. And here's a UK postcard picture on your screen. But remember, the address is all on one side. Well, this one has a real pretty picture, but they left a little piece empty so you could write a little short message. Because if you have a picture on one side, the address on the other side, you couldn't send any messages. That would be a problem. It's like that first postcard. It was a picture and it was a joke, but it doesn't explain the joke. It doesn't tell you anything about the joke. You had to get it all by yourself. So they designed a postcard, but if you notice on my slide, and I don't know, can you see my mouse? Does that yep, show up on sure can. Okay. Yes. He says pre-printed stamp. You can still get cards like that today. And the cards that you get, they're not really postcards. They're called postal cards. Two words. So a postal card is one that has a pre-printed stamp that you buy at the post office. And a postcard is either one you make yourself or you buy that somebody else has made and you put your own stamp on. So there's oh. a difference. And there are some people who collect postcards and there are people who collect postal cards. It's just different people collect different things, whatever they like to do. So if we're collecting for this honor, can we kind of collect both or do they have to be postcards or postal cards or? Well, it's supposed to be postcards, okay. not postal cards. And postcards are much easier to collect than postal cards because most people don't ever see the postal cards. You have to specifically ask for one at the post office. And like my post office doesn't carry them. I have to email, you know, buy them online and they send me a pack. So okay. that it doesn't happen very often. So it's much easier to find postcards than postal cards. 
Oh, good. No, I'm glad. I'm glad that the honor allows us to succeed more easily than it could. Yes. Be. Okay. Now, in the UK, the standard size was five and a half inches by three and a half inches, which is what the the smaller postcards you see are. Now, I'm going to switch my, my camera. See if I can do this successfully. I think you have to unshare first. Mm, well, it'll be on my other screen. Can you guys see me as the speaker? In the little inset, yes. Yeah. Okay. Can you see me in the little inset? Can you yep. see my hand? Let me turn off my turn off your virtual background because it's all I'm all pixels pixelated. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Okay, so is there any way that we could do the unshare? I can do it from my end. Can I unshare your slideshow so that we can see you in a big window? I don't think that you need to see me in a big window. Oh, okay. I'm a lot over there. Later on, I will. Okay, sounds good. Okay. Your virtual background is still on. It said it was off. So what's going on with that? Let's see. No, it won't let me turn it off unless I quit sharing. Um, well, go ahead and unshare and then reshare. That'll work. Okay, stop share. And let's see here. Pause for technical difficulties. No, it won't do it. I, I tell it none and it doesn't do it. Oh my. Yeah. Oh, that looked a little, huh? <laughs> That's pretty funny. <laughs> that is pretty funny. Yeah. Anyway, so oh, we'll try to make the best of it. Yeah. You see the picture here? This is mm -hmm. uh, this is a postal card. See, this stamp is pre-printed and then it's blank on all sides. Um, so the um, let me go back to sharing because I think that'll be easier for people to grasp what's going on here. All right. So postcards. Um, in general had the one picture and people were having a hard time finding where to write. So then in 1902 in the UK, somebody invented that divided back. So there'd be a picture on one side and then on the back, half of it was for writing and half of it was for the address. Great invention, people really like that. And notice it's 1902, it's before World War I, mm. okay? Because postcards went into a golden era where people were just sending me everywhere. It's like texting. People would like, oh, I can send a real short message. And that makes it much easier for me to do to to um, to send something quick instead of writing a whole long letter. Okay. So this was like texting before cell phones, then, right? This is texting before cell phones, and it turns out in the UK, I don't know if they still do that, but in the old times, they sometimes delivered the mail twice or three times in one day. The postman would come by multiple times a day, so I could send. See, Mark and I both lived in London. I could send Mr. O'Phil a note in the morning. He could answer me back at noon. Like I could say, Mark, can I go to your house on the back of a postcard? He could send me a mark, sure, come at three. And so then at three goes out. So it'd be like texting sort of, but because you have to remember there were no phones, there were no computers. So the way to communicate, you either had to send somebody over there to ask or you could send a little note. So I thought that was pretty cool. Pretty and then cool. one of the things you have to know about your postal system is the rates. And you'll notice the rates they stayed pretty low. And that's one of the things people really liked about postcards. They cost less to send. Mm -hmm. Okay. And you can see there where I, how they go up in rate. So now for the US, the first postcard was 73. Remember, it was after the UK. And they were plain front and back. And they had pre printed stamps, just like the UK. You had to get a postal card, not a postcard. Okay. And it wasn't until 89 that they allowed people to print their own cards. And if you look at this card, the Heinz company, which is a food company, designed this postcard that they give away as advertisement. You could get a free card that had their advertisement on and on the back, you could write a message to your friend. So it was a, a way for them to get people to advertise for free. Just like when you wear a pair of a jeans or a shirt that says, or you have shoes that say Nike, you're advertising for Nike because your shoes say it every time you run around, people see it. Well, this was a way to advertise. But again, you see the problem where the card on the top, 
they didn't have a place to write really. So he wrote his whole message right there because the other side was just for the address. So, and we got the divided back a year before the British. So, but right about the same time. So that was pretty cool. And then if you're a collector, you start looking for different things. The divided back come, uh, came in uh, 07 and they started doing this white border because mm -hmm. it's easier to print and saves ink. Ink was expensive. And then they started doing what's called linen cards. And linen cards, and we're going to go back to my little screen and let me see if I can show you a linen card. If you look on the little screen, this card, can you guys see any of the texture? It's not smooth. It feels like fabric almost. Okay. Because it kind of is fabric, right? Because linen is a type of fabric. So you kind of have a fabric slash paper wood pulp kind of all combined no, to make a fancier looking paper. card. It's still paper, but it has a texture. And when they roll the paper, when they make paper, they can add a texture to it. They did okay. it so the ink adheres better. Ah. It was invented in Germany. And it was very popular to do these cards because you could do art cards. And so then you start having cards that have art work on them, okay? Like pretty cards, people would paint them, okay? Mm -hmm. And make lithographs out of them and print them on cards. So that was the next era of cards. But what we have now, it's called photochrome. They are actual pictures. Even though this is a drawing of this canyon that I went to this summer, it's still printed on here like um, a paint uh, like a photograph would be printed okay a full color printing so that's what cards are now when you go and buy a postcard like this one here it's like printed just like a photograph which gives you a clue when you want to make your own you can get a really pretty picture send it off to whoever prints your paint your pictures and they print you a bunch and you could like do christmas cards let's say you take a picture of your whole family and you print them out and you could address the back of the photograph and send it like a postcard because you can print your own photographs. And these are the rates uh, of the United States. We're still at 35 cents for a postcard in the United States, which is about up two thirds of the cost of sending a regular letter uh, <laughs> by mail. Okay, so now I'm gonna switch to Miss Renee Cooper who's gonna tell you about the French system. Cool, so, so far we've had the UK and the United States and now French, sweetness. Right. <laughs> Hello everyone. My name is Renee Joubert Cooper and I'm so excited that Mrs. Boismer asked me to share about the history of the French postal system because my father was from Martinique, which is in the French West Indies. So he was a Frenchman. He came to the United States years and years ago and he learned English and he became a doctor in Michigan and he came to Texas even um, years ago before I was born and he did his internship here at the university in Texas. And then he went back to do his residency in Michigan. And my cousins are with us today. I'm so excited. They're from Guadalupe and it's Ghislaine and they're there. Ghislaine and Philip Bordelais and they're with their Pathfinder Club there, the Invincibles Avec uh, dear, which means that they're invincible with God. So we're really, really excited today to share with you about postcards, and especially because my cousins are here from Guadeloupe. So they're translating in French. Can I share my screen for the um, PowerPoint? Um, I believe so. Yes, Let me make ahead. sure. Okay. Yep. All right. Um, so I want to begin, Pathfinders. I'm so happy to see. Let's see. Put us over there. Go ahead and press the green share button oh. on the bottom. Okay. On the Let's bottom see. of your Zoom screen. Okay. <laughs> All right. You Can go. you see it, Pathfinders? Okay, there we go. Go back. Is this We've the page it. you're wanting to be on, or were you? Yeah. yeah. Okay. She's yes, that page. that was the first page. Sweet. Um. Let's see. See if I. Okay, I did it. All right, Zoom is a little tricky sometimes for me, Pathfinders, but I'm learning in my older age. I'm from the paper error, not the computer error. 
<laughs> so I wanted to share this um, picture of the French soldiers during the War of 1870. It's a Franco-Prussian war that they were fighting years ago. And the Red Cross wanted to allow the wounded soldiers to be able to communicate with their families in um, all over the country. And so they developed the postcards first. <laughs> and then that was in 1870. And then it truly was a just was introduced in 1872, 1873 timeframe that Mrs. Boismer ex explained to you in France. And so that's just a, an example of the postcard that was showing the soldiers during that war. So they could communicate with their home people at home. And then the next slide, we wanna talk about the 1878, this is an example without illustration. So there were postcards that were just words at first, and then they started doing illustrations later. Uh, in 1875, started out with postcards costing 15 cents, and then it went to 10 cents in 1879. And the next slide talks about the first picture that has the illustration of the Eiffel Tower. This was in 1889. Isn't that beautiful? It's the actual postcard, front and back, that you can see. And then we have postcards from Haiti, um, from North and West Africa that circulated in 1896. And so Guadeloupe and Martinique and Haiti, they're all French islands in the Caribbean, and they're, they're part of the French Antilles, which is the French West Indies. Haiti, you have the Caraibes, the Martinique. <laughs> Oh, Gilly. Hi. That's my cousin Gigi. Can she talk to you for a moment? Go ahead, Gigi. Gilan? Yeah. Sounded like a French it's, greeting. Yes, it's Gilan. Ah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's so exciting for me to see they're here. Um, and Pathfindering all around the world is exciting. So you'll, you'll be able to send pat postcards. Mrs. Boisman is going to explain to you. And we'll be able to communicate in English and French and all of the different languages and see each other around the world and witness for Jesus because he's coming soon and we want to, you know, do our outreach with people. And, and it's going to be fun to meet new people. Um, this next slide shows the panoramic view of Basseterre in Guadeloupe, which is where my cousins live. And then on the, this one here, I don't know if you see my mouse, the West yep. Indian, it's a postcard, uh, Creole, Creole. So there's Patois and Creole is in Haiti. They speak different languages. So even though it's a French language from France, they have different um, uh, uh, accents and different Patois, different, um, uh, I'm trying to think, different, um, it's like this, uh, so Mexico has different language from the people in Spain, but they're still speaking Spanish. Does that, yep, does that make sense to everybody? Yep, different dialect or different, yeah, different, different parts of the language. Thank yeah. you so much, different dialect. Okay, and then um, this is the Martinique postcard that I wanted to show you from where my father's from. And then a postcard of the map of Guadalupe in 1958. And then I just wanted to let you know that during the summertime, especially when the tourists are over there, um, they sell a lot of postcards back and forth around the world. And the average price for postcards is usually 40 euros. Um, this is just showing the central Bordeaux in um, 1910. And then this is um, our uh, Guadeloupe in the French West Indies in 1900 here. And then we have a croissant John, which is the yellow bird in Martinique. Can I interrupt the, you yeah. just a second? Uh, yes. Yes. Things to, to notice, these two old postcards, the one on the right and the left, how they're historic buildings, those old postcards, historians now use them to document things. So postcards have served now for historians to do research. How did that street look? Or how did that building look back in the time? So postcards are not just for now. Sometimes people use them for research looking at the old ones. Thank you, Mrs. Boisman. That's excellent information. Very good. And then um, this is just a postcard of um, the flower, one of the flowers in Martinique. And they have this, this church, Saint Louis, in Fort de France. That's where my father's from, Fort de France, Martinique. And over here, the Coastal Guadeloupe, beautiful postcards. And so you're going to be receiving postcards back and forth. You can correspond with Martinique, Guadeloupe, Haiti, all over Bermuda, 
all kinds of places all over the country. Um, another beach in Martinique is here. And then we have the mountain. And when um, I was young, I don't have that mountain because I didn't have that postcard, I couldn't find it. I have a postcard from my aunt Renee from years and years ago and I couldn't find it, I was looking for it. And it was the mountain that we climbed in, in Martinique. Um, when I was there little, I think I was about nine, I fell into an ant hole and <laughs> all these fire ants started running up my legs and my cousins were wiping them off and you know helping me out. And uh, it was just a really great memory to remember when I saw the mountains there on the postcards. Um, Guadalupe, um, French West India here. We have the Marie Galant Island postcard and then a West Indies antique map postcard. So this shows all down here. These are all the French Antilles Islands, lesser and higher, you know, the upper and the lower Antilles. And the last slide we have is a, a 1790 map of the West Indies postcard. And so this shows you, here's the United States over here. And then we have the French West Indies in this area on here. So it looks like at least for the French um, postcards that historical buildings, maps, and the beauty of different places um, in France or in the different colonies that former colonies and countries that use that speak French, that nature is a huge focus of a lot of the postcards. Am I, am I picking up on that correctly? Yes. They show the well, landscape. It's yeah. beautiful. It's beautiful in so many of those places. So it, it, I, I am glad that they've captured that on the postcards. So what's interesting to me is a postcard brought back all kinds of memories to Mrs. Cooper. Okay. And that's mm -hmm. another thing that's good. You don't have to have long stories all written out. Sometimes just a picture helps remember a trip. So a lot of people yeah. buy postcards. They don't ever send them. They just buy them because they want to remember something. Sure. Okay. So yeah. there's lots of reasons mm -hmm. for getting a postcard. Let me switch my camera. Here we go. There we go. All right. So let's go back to this PowerPoint presentation. It says what your next question is um, what is it called to collect postcards in your country? Well, I only know the one for UK and the US. I could not find the French being any different. It's Delitali, I guess is how you say it. I just call it postcard crafting. I didn't call it Delitali. Delitiology. Delitiology. Yeah, Delitiology. That's how you go. Delitiology. And it's a Greek word, uh, but it means. Uh, to collect postcards. So that's your answer to write down on your worksheet for that one. All right. So now the next question you need to find out, you need to write a brief description. So I'm going to show you something and you guys are going to have to write it in your sheet. Okay. The pre postcard era. The pre postcard era is the postal card. See how it says postal card here. That's the mm -hmm. pre and this one's an interesting card. This is a doctor who had these things printed up and he sent them to all his patients, giving them all this message. So he had somebody print up a postal card with his specific message to his patients. So that's an interesting way to communicate. And fact is people still do it now. They're uh, in the mail just this last week. See if I can find it here. I got a postcard and it was an advertisement. Mm -hmm. It has this picture of a model in a dress and it's a 20% off coupon on my postcard. Notice it's got the divided back. Yep. Okay. Mm -hmm. So it's still a regular postcard been printed for advertisement. So we haven't changed a lot in the last hundred years and 150 mm -hmm. years. Maybe okay. some better photos, but that's other than that, pretty much the same, huh? Yeah, pretty much the same. The same they do the same job. Yep. Okay. Now the pioneer era, this is private mailing. They don't have that on your thing. The first was the private mailing era. And then we have um so we did pioneer era and then we did private mailing era. Again, this is um the right. It says this side is for address only. See how it, they wrote it right on there because people wanted to use up all the space and they'd write along the edge here and they'd write along the edge here and they'd write every place they thought they could get away with it. So they went ahead and print it. 
this side for address only. <laughs> <laughs> so that's a private mailing era. And then the undivided back, I've showed you these two pictures before where yep. you don't have any place to write. Now in this one, you could maybe squeeze a few words right here. Like this guy squeezed a few words there, but it wasn't meant, there was no room for a message. And then the divided back where they've got a part for the address and a part for the writing. So in each of your, in your worksheet, there's a place to write down. You only need one or two words for each of these, okay? Yep. And this will be posted because I'm going really fast. <laughs> so this will be posted when Pastor Dan uh, posts the, the PowerPoint. You can go through the slides and you can get the answers if you didn't get to write that fast because I know I'm going really, really, really fast. Plus, I grew up in Illinois and, and I'm Cuban. Between those two things, we just talk fast. <laughs> right. Okay, so white border, postcards with a border on them to save ink. And that was 1915 to 1930. So that was during the First World War, if they were doing mm -hmm. that. Postcards played a big part, just like uh, Mrs. Renee said, they played a big part during the war where soldiers would send postcards home. But they were sometimes censored. If you wrote something like, I'm in such such a town, they would, they would black that out because you couldn't tell where you were because that could be used for, uh, for the other for the enemy so they would read the postcards and if it was okay they'd send them off and then i showed you a linen card that i had yep. but they're printed and in this picture here you might be able to see the texture better do you see how there's a texture to mm -hmm. it mm -hmm. okay so when you're if you're collecting postcards that's what you're looking for and then the photochrome era which is the modern ones we have now all right so those should answer all of question five. And now, greeting cards. You can send a greeting card. Like I said, you can make your own Christmas card and send them out. Mm -hmm. It costs less to send. You don't have to send people a big message. It costs less to make them, costs less to send them, and you don't have to say a lot. And sometimes I don't have a lot to say, and sometimes I do. You never know. <laughs> so greeting cards, you're supposed to describe this. Well. I would describe this as one side has a holiday uh, message greeting. on it, yeah. a greeting of some kind. That's right. Mm -hmm. Okay, historical card. Here's a really cool historical card. It commemorates the landing on the moon. So historical card is a card that, that does some historical significance to it. It's doing some event, some something that happened that you want to talk about. And then there's art cards. Those were very popular in the golden era of postcards where they, people would do art and you could do your own art on them if you want. The Adventures just did their artist award. This would be a really cool artist thing for them to do is to make their own artwork mm -hmm. on a postcard and send it to grandma. Or maybe your club could do a whole bunch of postcards and send them to like a nursing home to greet the people there. Cause it's nothing so much more fun to get something mm -hmm. in the mail. It's so mm -hmm. exciting. I like getting texts. I like getting emails, but I love getting something in the mail. It's like a present. There you go. I love that. And then photographic cards. See this one? This is these three little girls on a postcard. Isn't that fun? I mm -hmm. do those for Christmas sometimes. So even though it would be a Christmas card, it doesn't say Christmas. It just has a picture of our family. And there are old ones that are done that way. And there are new ones. We're still doing photographic cards. Okay, now the next assignment I can't help you with. You're going to have to do this research on your own. You have to show and label pictures of these. You're going to have to go on the internet. And if you type in postcards and go to images, you'll find these types of cards like I have here. You're supposed to have find one from each of these eras and put them in your presentation you're going to give your director, okay? I okay, can't we're that. still seeing photographic cards on our screen. Have you forwarded your, there we go. No, so, that's how to preserve. Is, I, I didn't cover that question because I can't do that for them. Oh, got it. Number got it. Okay. seven is show and label a picture of a postcard from each of these eras. So these eras that I just went through, the greeting cards and historical cards and art cards, you have to find your own example. Oh, gotcha. All right? So that's assignment for you. Now, the next one is about preserving postcards. How do you preserve a postcard? 
Well, there's lots of ways to do that. And on my little screen over here, let me see if I can do this. All right, I got rid of my weird background. <laughs> Good, good, good. It took me a minute. While Miss Renee was, Miss Renee was, uh, <laughs> Cooper was doing it, uh, I got rid of that so you can see this better. Now, this card, you see, it's in a little plastic sleeve because mm -hmm. this is an antique card that I want to protect. But I want to be able to read the front and I want to be able to look at the back. So it's got its own little protective sleeve. So that is one way to preserve a card. You could also preserve cards. And I, I don't use these myself, but you can do these. I have one here. It's a sheet that goes in a three ring binder and it'll hold three cards. And so I can do them that way and you can see the front and the back of the card. Okay. Mm -hmm. so that's another way to do that. You need can to they put them somewhere them? safe. Mrs. Boismer. Uh huh. Can they collect their 50 cards and put them in those sheet protectors like that in a binder? Yeah. Yeah, we're going to talk about that in a little bit. That's the question nine. So okay. we'll get to that in just a minute. Um, but the, the trick is you want to make sure that water can't get to your cards. Because what is an enemy of paper? Water, water. totally mm -hmm. messes up paper. Mm -hmm. And if it's a card you want to keep a long time, you want to make sure you don't wear it out. Because again, your fingers touching it, the edges get all bent and worn. So you want to be mm -hmm. careful of that. You want to keep them out of dirt. And here's one people forget, light. If I take my postcard and I frame it and I put it in, in um, and I put it on the wall near a window, give it about a year and it'll be half the color it was before. Mm -hmm. It'll just fade. So mm -hmm. light is a problem. And then odor. Yep. If you live in a household where somebody smokes or near where they do a lot of cooking and there's a lot of odors, your paper will absorb those odors and that will make the card kind of yucky. Okay, so you want to do that. And here's one that most people don't know about acid free. It turns out that paper, modern paper methods use an acid to make cheap paper. You can get paper that's acid free and paper that's normal. If you have paper that's normal around your card, it eats the edges of the card, okay? So if you're gonna preserve them, those are the things you need to be paying attention to, all right? Mm -hmm. That was number eight. Now we get to number nine, which I think is the most fun. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to make a card. So on your supply list, you were supposed to have some paper, some card stock, and in my little camera, you can see my card stock. And I'm going to stop sharing my screen so you can see what I'm doing bigger. Good, All good, right? good. So now you are supposed to have a ruler, your card stock, and a pencil. And the best size card for me is the four inch by six inch. So on your paper, you're going to mark a six inch mark here and then you're going to go down a ways and you're going to mark a six inch line here and then you're going to connect those two spots if you can see me do that i have a line oh what happened oh there we go i'm going to connect those two lines and that is how wide my card can be but now I need to do four inches down and four plus four is eight. So eight inches down. And then on the other side, I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna go four and eight. We're making two cards at once. Then I'll collect, connect my lines. And Pathfinders who are from outside of the United States, you know that you work in millimeters for such things. The good news about rulers are is that you can find the millimeter marking directly below. And most, most rulers have both millimeters and inches 
I can't do the conversions as fast as your ruler can, but right. you can and look so, for the four inch and find the centimeters and millimeters that and are you're close to do 10, 10 centimeters by 15 centimeters. Okay. There you go. 10 by 15. There we go. Thank 15. you. So now I've got <clears throat> my cards marked out and then I get a pair of scissors and I cut my cardstock. Now, the reason I said cardstock is if you use regular paper and you try to mail regular paper, it'll get all bent up and not make it. It's too flimsy, too thin. So it needs to be thick. So let's say you don't have cardstock. What if you have a cereal box? You could get a cereal box. You can cut the same size and then you can glue a plain piece of paper on top, okay? So you can make yourself a card. This is now a postcard. There's a couple things you wanna do to make it more official. On one side, you're gonna to wanna to divide it in half. So I'm gonna divide it in half, because remember, we now use divided back cards, right? So that'd be about at the 75 millimeter or 7.5 um, centimeter mark or so, right? Right, and then about three inches. And it doesn't have to be exact. There if I'm go. a little more to this side or a little more to that side, the post office doesn't care. They just want to make sure that one side is just for the address. Okay. Now, I'm not a very good artist, but I can print stuff off the internet. And I went and found a bunch of pictures of the giant scarf. And I printed them out Beautiful. and I glued them to my card stock. I now have a giant scarf postcard. And on the back, I've drawn a part for me to write a message and a place for me to add, do my address. Notice I've put lines go. here. You don't have to have that, but I don't write very straight. So that helps me write straight. Okay. So this is all you need. This can go in the mail. You can make nice. any kind of postcard. Now I started playing around and I like to play with my computer. So I designed a postcard on my computer. I went and got the NAD symbol. I got a symbol of Texas. I said, Texas Pathfinders. I typed that out. I just moved it all on my screen. I printed it on cardstock. Ta-da! I have my own custom postcard. Has my picture, has a green component. You can't buy that anymore. Send that one to me, Mrs. Boysburg. <laughs> you want one of those? I and like that one. When I was a little kid, my father was a ham radio operator. And we talked to people all over the world. And at the very end, my dad would get their address and he would send them a postcard from Illinois and they would send him back mm -hmm. one. And we had a whole wall at my house of postcards from all over the world of people we talked to on the radio. It was mm -hmm. way fun. So you can make your own postcards. It doesn't matter how you make them. It's just fun to do. Now, I'm going to go back to my presentation because I'm almost out of time. I got just a few minutes. <laughs> I love that. I love that postcard. <laughs> there you go. And I want here you to is your 13-minute warning, Miss Miss Boisman. Yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> the next requirement is to collect 50 postcards, and you have to make them into something you can display. In your supplies, I asked you all to get a shoebox. That's probably the least expensive way to, um, to collect cards, okay? Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna stop sharing. And here we go. And I'm gonna switch my camera. Too much technology. There we go. Here's my shoe box that I got started, okay? This is a Nike box. My tennis shoes came in this. But I don't want to advertise Nike. I want it to be my own postcard. <laughs> so I printed off pictures of postcards and I glued them all over my, my box. And it says postcards. Now, if you do that, your mom knows this is not trash. Yep. <laughs> Doesn't have you clean out your room. And you can do this. And then inside, you can put your postcards and you can make little cardboard dividers so you can divide the different kinds. You can buy things like those dividers that I showed you before. So you could make yourself a notebook that you have the cards in. Okay, you can do that. 
they make card storage boxes. You can spend money, but a shoebox works really well. Uh -huh. Fact is, I went to the dollar store and I got myself some stickers that have letters and I'm going to stick them on my box to have words on there because I thought that would be fun. And I'm going to decoupage my box. That's a different honor. <laughs> We're not going to cover that now, but you can decoupage your box. Anyway, it doesn't matter how you do it. It just says you have to do it. And you have to have one. The first one has to be a religious card. And then you have to have 10 from different states or provinces. So let's see here. So here it says at least 10 cards from different states and provinces and at least two countries. Now see this address here? That address is for a jot form site. When you go to that address, and I'm gonna put it in the chat in a little bit here. Um, it will let you register to exchange cards with other Pathfinders all over the world just for the next six months. You will also get one from Texas for sure, because I will send you one. And you can pick if you need a religious card. It's a way for you to start your collection, okay? You probably won't get 50 from us, but the other Pathfinders will be able to exchange with you so you can get postcards from anybody in the world, all right? So I think if I go over here, let's see here. I need to find my. And my Mrs. Boisman, my cousins are learning English, so they would love to, to correspond with anyone from Texas or any place and anywhere. <laughs> All right, that sounds good. Okay, and I've put the I've put the um, forms put the link email at link up there in the chat so people can grab it. Okay, thank you. Because it's hard for me to do the chat and the presentation and the <laughs> That's why I'm here to be of assistance in that way. All right. So arrange the collection of postcards in a suitable display. Your director is going to have to tell you how you're going to do that. For those of you who are virtual clubs, maybe your director just has you show them how your display is done. But they may have, like at our church, we meet every Sabbath, but only a few people, but they would let us have a table of display. So if all the whole club is doing that, you could do a display. But you have to, um, things to remember, don't poke holes in your cards or glue them down on your board because that messes up your card. You can leave them in your box <laughs> with a display board that explains what's in your box. Make sure you have dividers so people can go through your cards and see your religious ones or your states. You can put them on clear, clear sleeves in your binder, but make sure your binder says who you are, what it is, so they can see inside. And then another way to put cards on a display board is these little corner protections. You can take a piece of paper, tape it on each corner, and then slide the card in so you're not poking a hole in your card, okay? Yeah, don't pull coals, don't glue it. Yeah, good, yeah, good, good reminders. Coals, Okay, and then the last thing we need to cover is the memory, the Bible verses with greetings. Now, who knows what kind of greetings they have in the Bible? I have the answer on that sheet, that slide, so I'm going to take it off. <laughs> so, the first one is 2 Corinthians 13, 13. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you, all of you. Okay. I like how Romeo says letters from the Bible often had greetings. Right, they do. This is a letter, and this is Paul. Mm -hmm. He starts out all his letters with a greeting. When you write a letter, you say, hello, hi, how are you? Those are the kind of greetings we do. We don't talk this fancy, okay? I don't say grace be on to you, Renee Cooper. I could, <laughs> but I don't generally say that. But that is how right. they spoke in those days, okay? So if we look at Philippians, um, Philemon 4, 21, uh, greet every saint in Christ Jesus. The friends who are with me greet you. Again, there we go. Paul saying, hello, I'm glad you're there. I got friends with me. They say hello too. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that's a greeting. And then in 2 John 13, and they just, the verse they want you to do is just verse 13, but I put more of it here because there's two greetings in that chapter. The first one says, the elders to the elect lady and her children, 
whom I love in the truth, and not only I, but also those who know the truth, because of the truth that abides in us, will be with us forever. Grace, mercy, and peace be with us from God the Father and Christ Jesus, the Father, Son, and the truth and love. And it goes on. But he starts out with this very elaborate greeting yep. of all the people who are with him. But the, he tells us what we have in common. We have in common the love of Jesus. We love mm -hmm. the truth. And it abides yeah. forever. That is in his greeting. That's mm -hmm. really cool. And then the verse they wanted you to read, it says, the children of the elect sister send you their greeting. That's like a PS. It's right towards mm -hmm. the end. He's giving you a little PS at the end. Oh, yeah. All the kids here say hello. <laughs> <laughs> so you are supposed to write on number 11 how you perceive what I just told you. How did Paul, how did John, how did they write greetings in the Bible times? which is different than we have greetings now. So they want you to kind of write that out. All My right? guess is that Paul would have never written a postcard because he just couldn't use that few of words. That, <laughs> man, that, that <laughs> man loved his words way too much. He, he would have had did. to write a letter. Yeah, he did. But I then again, th third John is short enough. You could almost fit all of third John on a postcard. So maybe yeah, John would have used a postcard. Maybe Paul, yeah. And you always make do. I always had to laugh. I have some postcards. Let me see if I can where did I put them so I can show you here we go I have some really fun postcards folks they are so fun uh, let me stop sharing here Mrs. Boisman someone said in the in the chat poems could they put poems on a postcard they can poems would be lovely here's a postcard it's a seed packet how cool is that it's a seed packet nice. it has a place for an address Arizona seeds but I have an old postcard and I think I kept it out. I love all your postcards. This person got so carried away with writing, there's no place for the address. Oh no. So they couldn't send it. <laughs> oh, they had to my. put it in an envelope to send it. This side here <laughs> is for the address. See, it has the lines here, it has lines for putting uh -huh. the address. They got carried away. And I always had to laugh. My grandfather would write a message and then my grandmother would turn it and she'd get a different color pen and she'd write this way. So one would be blue <laughs> and one would be green. And so you'd have two messages on one card. And when you're sending something to Cuba, it's very expensive. So they were very conscious how much it costs to send something. So they did it as cheap as they could, but they still both had greetings to give to people. Wow. So, yeah, it's kind of fun to see how different people did it in the old days mm -hmm. and how, um, how we do it now. And I look forward mm -hmm. to all of you sending, going to the dot forms, filling out that form and we switch cards between us. I think it'll be so fun because it'd be like Christmas, going to the mailbox and finding something from somebody else in the world. And that's one of the, and I, M Mrs. Boismer and I talked about this quite a bit because we wanted to be sure that we offered you a safe and secure alternative to get this postcard honor without having to worry about, oh, I don't know these people from wherever. Um, security and safety and protecting you as young people is a huge priority for Pathfinders yeah. around the world. And that's why the job form is part of keeping you safe, but letting you receive postcards from a whole bunch of safe people in safe places mm -hmm. now so help, to help keep you safe help us all pathfinder community get together all at the same time make sure mm -hmm. you ask permission from your parents you should not be getting correspondence from anybody unless they know that you've asked for this okay it's mm -hmm. very important that you have permission and when you look at the form your last name is not required okay we do mm -hmm. need a first name but you could just tell us your name is Mark or your name is Renee. You don't have to use your last name if your parents don't want you to, okay? But we're, it's a safe place to do it, but make sure you have, you have your permission before you fill out the form, all right? Yes. Very good. Sweet. All right, I think I'm good. I can hand it over to you, Mark, and you can introduce Jim Thompson. 